your initial reaction, Mannix, after the uh, Westbrook trade? A little surprised. So in the last few days, really weeks, the Lakers have basically dangled the the Kyle Kuzma, Contavious Caldwell Pope package to uh, almost every team that's out there. And they didn't have a lot of takers. But in the last two or three days, there was some traction with Sacramento on a Buddy Heald trade. And if you look at that trade, it, it makes sense. I mean, Heald, Heald's one of those guys that, yeah, you, you kind of look at him as empty calories in a way, never been on a winning team, but the numbers are what they are. He's been close to or above 40% from three in each of the last four seasons. And when you look at what the Lakers need, perimeter shooting is at the top of that list. Instead, to pivot and to basically deliver that exact same package you were going to send Sacramento for Heald to Washington for Westbrook is puzzling. And I just, you know, did, I carpet bombed kind of every assistant coach that I know with text and asked them, you know, what do they think? And, and every one of them said, it doesn't make a lot of sense. If you're LeBron James, what you're looking for is a floor spacer and a secondary playmaker. Russ is not a floor spacer and is a primary playmaker, somebody we know succeeds with the ball in his hands. So, so why did they do it? it it's, it's still hard to – I haven't talked to anybody in L.A. since the deal got done last night, Dan, so I don't, I don't know. But there's obviously a strong relationship between LeBron and Russell Westbrook. Um, I wonder what voice LeBron had in all this. Uh, I, so I, I, it's like I can explain it with Dan. Like, you know, Russ, you, you know me, I, I've always been a pretty strong defender of Russell Westbrook. I, I firmly believe that this triple-double mark he's been putting up over the years is, is impressive. But for that team, it doesn't make a lot of basketball sense. I love the Buddy Heald possibility because that's what they needed. Uh, like, who's, who's the point guard on this team now? Is, is well, Le- that's, the, like, that, that's the thing, because, you know, the last two years under Frank Vogel, you know, it was a priority for Vogel to say, LeBron, you are now the point guard. We're going to transition you to being the primary playmaker. Russ is not like Damian Lillard, who you can play off the ball when C.J. McCollum is operating as point guard. He's someone that needs the ball in his hands and needs to play downhill in order to be successful. I mean, in like a perfect world, you'd say, Russ, you're the sixth man and you come off the bench and you be that instant offense guy to carve up second units. But we both know that's not going to happen. So Russ, AD, LeBron, surrounded by Talon Horn and Tucker and I, I don't know Caruso. who else. Caruso, maybe in that front court. You're obviously going to have to play another big because we know AD doesn't want to be a five for most of his uh, his playing time. So I guess you're talking about Marcus Gasol, who's got a contract for next year. It just seems if you're a team looking at the Lakers, how to defend them, you're going to shrink the floor a lot and make them beat you from three-point range. Yeah, I know. Plus, Russ has one speed. And can yeah. LeBron play at that speed? Are they best at that speed? I, I, I it's puzzling. Well, they they do they you know they do want to play up tempo. Like that's something that's been a staple of of what at least how Frank Vogel wants to play, ideally. So With I, LeBron at thirty seven, you're going to be. Up. Well, no, I mean maybe it's a case where LeBron's not you know I mean, LeBron's not filling the lane anymore. Like you know maybe it's the case where Russ just kind of initiates a lot of the the up tempo offense and. They see if they can get easy buckets that way. I, Dan, honestly, I'm grasping at straws a little bit here because, you know, defenses are smart. Defensive coaches are smart. They're going to figure out how to shrink the floor yeah. and make West. I mean, look, Dan, you go back to the bubble playoffs. I remember watching in the bubble Lakers against Rockets. I mean, one of the priorities for the Lakers defensively was to take the ball out of James Harden's hands and make Russ shoot. Yeah. And he had some good moments, but how how they played against Russ is how teams are now going to start playing against them. 